Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you have a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about ingredients, formulations, something you may have heard about, read about, 844-236-6010 is our number. And if you want to purchase any of the Longevity products that you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, you can call the bright side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can also order Longevity products off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team from the websites or by calling the phone team at 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can be part of the Longevity Brightside Ben team Make some money selling longevity products, helping spread the word about the power of a good nutritional supplement program. If you're an entrepreneur, it's a great way to make some extra money, to make a living. A lot of folks are making a good living, helping people understand the power of nutritional supplementation and the longevity products. Call 866-735-2470 or head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com if you want to sign up off the web for a one-time $25 fee, you can have your own business. Brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, or call 866-735-2470. All right. Welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We've been talking about the nature of frequencies, electricity, electrical waves, how they're fundamental to health. At the end of the day, the body is electrical. It's fundamentally electrical. It's not fundamentally chemical. Even though most of the time when we talk about health on this program and in our mainstream medical model, we're typically talking chemistry, biochemistry, and I'm guilty of that. I am a biochemistry geek. I love chemistry. I admit it. Food's about chemistry. Nutritional supplements are about chemistry. Exercise is about biochemistry, uh, chemistry of the, body, of, uh, of the body and the brain. Rest, relaxation, these are all chemical phenomena. But chemistry is already at the second level. It's not the fundamental level. The fundamental level is electricity. Chemistry works because of electricity. Chemistry is secondary to electricity. And the only reason we don't know it is because you can't sell electricity. You can sell chemistry, but you can't sell electricity. We control our electricity. So nobody tells us that at the end of the day, our disease or, lack, uh, or our health, our health or our lack of health, are electrical because... They can't sell us anything for that. They've tried. They've tried to sell electrical equipment. That was uh, uh, in the pre-drug days. You know, when they first discovered the biological nature of electricity somewhere around the mid-19th mid century, it starts to dawn on them that there's these electrical things called nerves and there's an electrical nature to the body. It became, it became really a very, almost a spiritual quest to be able to control that electricity. Mary Shelley wrote a book called Frankenstein, and that's all, uh, that, that whole mindset that we could use electricity to create life was really, it, it was really, it, it, 
was starting to get a lot of power. Electricity was considered to be an amazing, amazing thing, and the body had this electricity in it. First of all, electricity was considered miraculous. It's always been considered miraculous, and it is miraculous. But then when we had bioelectricity in the middle of the 19th century, oh my God, they went nuts for that stuff. But then chemistry kind of took over. Why? Because the drug companies were making a lot of money with chemistry. Organic chemistry, which kind of grew up at the same time as, elect, as our, uh, our understanding of electricity in the, in the 19th century, it became a profit center. And so we developed this model of biology that was really based in, in chemistry, because not because it was the most powerful place to work, but because it made the most money. Chemistry is ridiculously cheap, and because it takes a lot of industry to create chemicals, to turn electricity into chemicals, only big companies could do it. But the fact of the matter is, chemicals, molecules, atoms, electrons, they're all vibration. They're all electricity. They're nothing but vibrations, which means that everything, because everything's made up of those things, is vibration. It's all vibration. Our bodies and the world our bodies live in are vibrations. So it makes perfect sense, despite the magical connotation and the, the non-scientific implications of vibrational medicine. It sounds so airy-fairy. If you're out there and you think this is less than hardcore science, then you should probably look into the history of quantum physics, which is about as scientific as it gets. Quantum physics, all, all the great quantum physicists not only recognized that underneath everything is just vibration, they knew that, they, they proved it mathematically. We have all kinds of inventions that take advantage of the vibrational nature of the world, from computers to bar scanners to uh, iPhones. Or without the, the leveraging of electrical vibrations via computers and via artificial intelligence devices, we, would have a, we wouldn't have the, the, the planet we live in would be unrecognizable. Think of how much, uh, uh, how our world has become this information and electrical, uh, electrically dense system in the last 100 years, last 150 years, which is a blip, obviously, in the, in the scale of evolution. So the fact of the matter is, is that quantum physics on upwards recognizes that nothing exists other than vibration. In fact, the quantum physicist actually goes to, the most brilliant quantum physicist actually goes so far as to say that nothing exists until it's observed. Not just that everything is vibrational and there's no such thing as really solid matter, but really we create everything with our minds. We have to be conscious or aware of something before it can be real for us. That's how out there quantum physics is. From a quantum level upwards, how we think about the world is how we create the world. That makes appreciation, awareness uh, of all the good things in our lives, what's right with our lives, what's right with our bodies, what's right with our health, a key element of health. Our awareness and our consciousness create our health fundamentally. I don't want to get too out there, but the facts are the facts. Appreciation improves vibration appreciation improves vibrational health. It improves coherence. And in fact, simply by being aware of all the good things in our life, we will improve the health and the strength of our vibrational energy. You'll know it's working by how you feel. When you appreciate something, you will feel good because your vibrations are becoming coherent. Coherent vibrations can be assessed by feeling. You can tell how coherent your vibrations are by how you feel. When you feel crappy, your vibrational frequencies are chaotic. You're incoherent. You're more like a, the, remember the ca, uh, coherence versus incoherence in vibration is associated with health and is best thought of as the difference between a light bulb and a laser. A light bulb gives off incoherent light. A laser gives off coherent light. So when we're uh, vi vibrating coherently, we're more like a laser than a light bulb and we can access this through our feelings and we can tell, we can tell that we're accessing it with our feelings, uh, we, uh, we're becoming coherent by good feelings or versus bad feelings. It's pretty much as simple as that. You can tell whether your frequencies and your coherence are being supported by how you feel. And I'm talking about the sensations in your body. I'm not talking about the thoughts or the concepts or the ideas. We only have two, ba we've got lots of thoughts. We've got zillions of thoughts and all kinds of concepts and ideas, but there's only two basic feelings from a sensation level, and we all know what they are. They're good feelings and they're bad feelings. Feelings that are survival-based and feelings that are thrival-based. Sensations, feelings in the body that are linked to the parasympathetic nervous system and those that are linked to the sympathetic 
sympathetic nervous system. All right, we'll finish up when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, health challenges your loved one may be dealing with, or a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, we've got a empty board. Nobody's on the line now, so 844-236-6010 is your number if you you want to get on... uh, Get on board if you've gotten busy signals in the past. Now's the time, 844-236-6010 to give us a call. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or you can call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, please head over to truthtreatments.com. Check out our Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Transdermal C Serum, voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar Magazine. If you're looking for high-potency retinol products, look no further than our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, made with 25% vitamin C as well as a big old dose of retinol. No preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, water, silicon, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want ever in any of our Truth Skin Health products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we are talking about this whole vibrational frequency, coherent na- coherency nature of the body. And I was saying uh, last segment how the great quantum physicists, the most brilliant minds of the 20th century, maybe of all time, understood that underneath what appears to be solid matter, underneath what appears to be everything from a galaxy to our bodies to our cells is really vibrational, electrical. Max Planck, who's one of the greatest phys- uh, physicists of the 20th century, said, uh, there is no matter as, this is a quote, there is no matter as such. All matter originates only by virtue of a force which brings the particle of an atom to vibration. I could continue here, but the point is that even the great Max Planck, Niels Bohr, the, the, uh, de Broglie, and, and uh, Richard Fenneman, and I mean, all the great names of quantum, phys- of quantum physics of the 20th century have recognized that consciousness, observer, vibration, it, underneath what appears to be substantial is nothing but insubstantial process movement and this is so powerful it's powerful because it means we're not condemned we're not condemned to our health the way it is now if we don't if we don't like it we have more control than we have been told and it's not because of uh, because of the chemistry chemical uh, the chemical natures of our body it's because of the electrical natures of our body and remember we started talking about this whole thing when we started talking about the heart and the heart is, is in particular the whole body's vibrational but nothing exemplifies the vibrational nature the electrical nature of the body more than the heart the heart and the brain are the two major electrical generators in the body and the heart is much more powerful than the brain the heart is generating an electrical field that surrounds your body that can be measured and it's really cool, by the way. It's called a toroidal field. It's just, it looks like an egg. The energy that comes out of the body, this is not airy-fairy. It's called your aura. And anybody who thinks that this is airy-fairy needs to read up on or look at the pictures taken by a guy named Harry Oldfield. O-L-D-F-I-E-L-D. Oldfield. I think it's I-E. And he's got some pictures. Uh, oh, my God. Of the stuff that's coming off of things that are alive from leaves to human bodies to cells. Unbelievable. The heart is a generating an electrical field, an electromagnetic field that's thousands of times more powerful than the brain. And while cardiologists recognize this, this is not anything, you know, crazy. You can measure it with an EKG, electrocardiogram. You can measure the electromagnetic energy coming out of the, coming out of the heart. And cardiologists all know this. What, but what's not recognized is the relationship of those vibrations of, of the heart to feelings, to sensations in the body. When we have a lousy sensation, the vibrations in the heart are starting to become incoherent. 
And when we have a good sensation, the vibrational energy of the heart is becoming coherent. I wonder if our epidemic of heart disease, which seems to be not even affected in the least, or maybe a little bit by our pharmacomedical remedies, but you know, it's still the leading cause of death, and its rates of heart disease have increased dramatically in the last 100 years. I wonder if it has to do with our feelings, our sensations, more than medicalization, more than statin drugs, more than beta blockers, more than calcium channel blockers. All of these drugs, by the way, will make the body more, inco more incoherent. They will reduce coherence. So if you hear any doctor dismissing the importance of vibration or electrical energy or even the power of the mind and the brain in the causation of all diseases, in the remediation and the healing of all diseases as well as the, the causation of all diseases, to paraphrase Albert Einstein, great thinkers have always encountered tremendous resistance from mediocre minds. New ideas will always encounter resistance. That doesn't mean that they're not true. And that's where we come to Royal Rife. We've been talking about this guy, Royal Raymond Rife. Royal Raymond Rife, one of the greatest minds of the 20th century, brilliant scientist, studied optics, invented microscopes. He showed that bacterial infections could be eliminated without drugs using vibration. Using vibrational energy, shooting bacteria, basically, with, with vibrations, you kill bacteria. Now, this, he had the unfortunate timing. Uh, unfortunately, his timing was a little bit bad because he came up with his ideas at the same time that antibiotics were being invented. And, you know, you could take a pill, and all of a sudden, your, your bacterial infection went away. And that was considered one of the greatest miracles of all time, and, and you know, perhaps rightly so. One of the greatest modern, I don't say miracles, but the, one of the greatest medical advances of all time. And perhaps rightly so. Infections used to kill millions and millions of people. The Spanish flu killed, I don't know, some ridiculous amount of millions of people. 18 million people, some crazy number. And that was 1918. Uh, I don't know how many million people, but it was, it was a ridiculous amount of people. Well into the tens of millions. So anyway, Dr. Reif, and he was focusing on bacterian frequencies, but then in 1934, he started to get into cancer. The University of Southern California appointed a special committee, actually. Reif was not an outsider. He was an insider. He wasn't some wild-eyed, crazy hippie. He was an insider. He was inventing high-powered microscopes that the medical model was very fond of, they were using. He was considered by everybody to be a genius. And so the University of Southern California appointed a, spe a special uh, research committee, and they wanted to see how, if Reif stuff was for real for when it came to cancer. Cancer was just starting to become an epidemic in the 1930s. I mean, it was always here, but it was start, the rates of cancer were starting to increase. No surprise, because industrialization, which leads to cancer, was, was, was increasing, and fertilizers and pesticides and organic chemistry and all that. So, of course, cancer rates were increasing, and so they, the medical folks were starting to you know, say, well, what can we do here? And University of Southern California heard about Dr. Reif, and they commissioned him to do a, a study. They basically sent him terminal cancer patients to treat with his frequency machines and lo and behold 86% of the patients that they sent them were completely cured they adjusted the treatment and 100% of the patients were completely cured and this is all described in a book called Royal Raymond Rife and the Cancer Cure That Worked by a guy named Barry Lines L-I-N-E-S so basically with this study they showed that you could I'm not going to say cure, but you could certainly maybe cure. You, you can help, help facilitate healing of cancer using frequency. No surprise if you understand the frequency nature that's, that underlies everything, including the cells of the body, including cancer cells, which are seriously electrically distorted cells, by the way. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be Hi, back this after this. We are back on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, the longevity products, longevity business, health questions, formulation questions, ingredient questions, if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you're advertised or recommended on the program, you can head to... Uh, BrightSideBend.com, PharmacistBend.com, CriticalHealthNews.com. You can also purchase our Truth Skin Health products at TruthTreatments.com, TruthTreatments.com. Get your phone calls here in just a moment. A couple interesting articles. Uh, 
where are my little articles here? Oh, this is a good one. Check this out. From uh, Scientific Reports, researchers in Germany and, uh, and France have discovered that nanoparticles, that is tiny little particles from tattoos, circulate inside the body. The elements that make up the ink and tattoos travel inside the body in micro and nanoparticle forms and reach the lymph nodes. Not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. Listen, I don't have a problem with tattoos. They can be creative and they can be artful, but there's no case can be made that they are good for you in any way, shape, or form. If you, are, uh, if you do have tattoos or you're getting tattoos, use chelating agents as nutritional supplements. Use things like zeolite, bentonite clay, algaes, and seaweeds. These will magnetically attract nanoparticles out of the blood. Very likely ink nanoparticles, which are probably mineral-based. It's always chelation therapy is an amazing, amazing way to treat the body. I, I, and I'm, I'm talking full-blown chelation therapy, where you go to a, a chiropractor or a doctor or an MD or, or an ND and have them inject EDTA into your blood. It, it's just an amazing anti-aging strategy. But especially if you're dealing with some kind of toxicity, and if you apparently if you uh, are getting tattooed, if you have lots of tattoos, the chances are pretty good that you're dealing with internal blood toxicity. And as we all know, if you've been listening to this program, all diseases are preceded by dirty blood. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, check this out. This is from the uh, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Gut microbes may influence multiple sclerosis progression. Huh. Fancy that. Where have you heard that before? The microbiome is involved in, in, in multiple sclerosis, which as we all know is an autoimmune disease. It's not just MS. Gut microbes, dysbiosis, are behind all auto, autoimmune disease. That is messed up gut bacteria are behind all auto, autoimmune disease. In fact, they're behind all disease. Cancer, diabetes, thyroid disease, neurological disease. You will always find a gut microbe component and book after book after book and study after study after study has come out on this. I mean, there's so many books. I have a collection of, of, micro, of uh, microbiome books, textbooks as well as, as books for the, uh, for the lay people. For, the, for lay people. Uh, I have a, a, two shelves filled with these kinds of books. And 20 years ago, nobody ever heard of this probiotics and good bacteria 25 years ago. Today, you can't uh, read one health journal without reading at least uh, one article about how important digestion and the microbiome and uh, gut bacteria are when it comes to health or the lack thereof. Anyway, from the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, researchers at UC San Francisco have identified gut microbes associated with multiple sclerosis in human patients, showing that these microbes take part in regulating the immune response to disease, uh, of the disease. Use fermented foods. Use your nightly essence. Make sure you're eating fiber. Stay off of sugars that mess up gut bacteria, particularly concentrated sucrose products. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. Let's welcome Carol from Washington to The Bright Side. Good morning. Hey, Carol. Um, hello, can you hear me? Hear you loud and clear. What's hello? up? Yes, ma'am. No, you can't hear me. Oh, that's too Hello? bad. Hello, Carol. I'm going to give you one more shot here. Carol, Carol. Going once. Carol, Hello? Carol. Hello? Carol. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? I hear you. <laughs> I'm oh. going to let you... <laughs> okay, good. Yes. I, I wanted to give you to uh, Doug, my friend that has uh, type 2 diabetes and neuropathy in his feet, and he's putting on the, put on these pills that are really helping his neuropathy. What pills? I'm wondering what did... how... How what, dangerous they, they are. Nothing's helping his neuropathy. What they're doing is they're making him feel better. That's different. So what's, tell me what the pills he's on. Or, or is he uh, there? Hi, Doug. Yeah, I'm right here. I'm on the phone now. <laughs> uh, hey, Doug. Gabapentin. Okay, you're How on you gabapentin. Doing? I'm doing yep. good. Thank you for asking. Gabapentin is an anticonvulsant drug that works with pain. Uh, interestingly, a lot of anticonvulsant drugs also help improve pain. So that's one of the strategies that doctors will use. Gabapentin, as far as drugs go, is not the end of the world. It's very similar to, it's similar to something called GABA, um, uh, G-A-B-A, which is, a, which is just a natural brain chemical. Uh, but but uh, 
it's not a good idea to try to treat yourself, uh, neuro, uh, try to treat the symptoms without taking care of the underlying cause. Neuropathy and diabetes go hand in hand. They, one, right. one leads to the other, okay? So then the question becomes why? If you understand why diabetes and neuropathy are linked, that will be the clue to taking care of your neuropathy. Do you know why they're linked? I'm not picking on you here. I'm just, I just want to know what you know. Why is that? Because di uh, sugar, when you have diabetes, your blood sugar is not being controlled, so the blood sugar goes right. up, right? Sugar, yep. sugar burns hot. Do you ever burn sugar in a saucepan? You ever yep. see what sugar? Ha you know how it gets caramelized and bubbles. Do you ever get a sugar burn right. on your arm or right? It burns super duper hot, and so when you have high levels of sugar in the blood, it uh, the sugar can can actually have a burning effect, not a not a literal burning, but a biochemical burning effect uh, on various components of the body, especially cell membranes, the outside part of the cell membrane. Or the outside part of the cell. It's called the membrane. Are you following me so far? Because I'm, I'm going somewhere oh, with yeah. this. Yep. Okay, good. So you're basically caramelizing the outside parts of cells. Now, the membrane is important for all cells, but it is extra important for nerve cells. It's important for all cells. The membrane is the key player in cell health. Make no mistake about it. The cell membrane is the key player, the key determinant in how healthy a cell will be. And, if, and as a cell is healthy, so are we. So the key player here is the membrane. The membrane is always going to be resp uh, uh, susceptible to damage by sugar, but nerve membranes are especially susceptible, extra susceptible. Are you with me so far? Hey, oh, yeah. Okay. 100%. So you got to get the sugar under control. Now, the pain relief is obviously good. Nobody wants to be in pain. I understand this. However, if you still have the bad habits that are causing the neuropathy, but you're not feeling the pain, that's going to make things worse because now you don't have a signal. So what you want to do is while you're on your gabapentin, make sure you're controlling your sugar. Neuropathy says you're not controlling your sugar. How do you do it? Lots of ways. Obviously, the most important way is to not eat the sugar. Of course, that's easier said than done. And by sugar, I'm talking bread and pasta and potatoes and rice and, and cereal and bagels and pizza. There's sugar everywhere. Everything is sugar. So the best way is to reduce your intake of all these kinds of foods. If that's hard to do, at least do what you can do. Here's some tricks to help you do that. More protein. All right, but not don't overdo the protein because protein itself gets turned into sugar, but more protein, especially whey protein powder. Get yourself on uh, Slender FX for longevity or, or bone broth protein also is good. Also more fat, especially coconut oil, especially butter, anything, and also fatty vitamins and also your ultimate EFAs for longevity. And then there's wonderful minerals that you can use as well as the B vitamins. Hang on. We'll finish up when we come back from our break. Uh, Doug and Carol, and then if you're on hold, we'll get to you as well. I uh, got a call from Colorado here. I'm looking forward to talking to her. 844-236-6010 uh, is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open at 844-236-6010. We're talking to uh, Doug, right? Is that correct, Doug? In, yep, uh, sure is. Hey, hey, Doug. Okay, so everything I said made sense so far, right? How sugar has oh, yeah. this damaging burning effect. By the way, technically that's called glycation, and you probably have a hemoglobin A1C test done regularly. That's a test oh, to yeah. see how. That's a test to see how fast the uh, membrane on or, or the protein that's in red blood cells is glycating or or burning up uh, due to sugar. Uh, in any case, you want to work on your sugar is basically what I'm saying. In addition to the strategies we talked about before we went to break, there are wonderful supplements, selenium. Uh, the ultimate selenium from longevity can be helpful. The sweeties from longevity can be helpful. The Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the B vitamins and the electrolytes can be helpful. Vegetable juices, make, get yourself a Vitamix and be making vegetable juices. Really what I'm saying here, my friend, is you got to change your life. You got to you got to completely live a different way. And while it's all well and good to take your gabapentin and feel better, if you're not paying attention to what's happening in the body uh, as a response to your life, or your lifestyle choices, uh, in the long run, it's not going to serve you. Even if the even if the gabapentin can help re reduce the pain, what you really want to be doing is focusing on living a long, healthy, vital, strong life. Because guess what, neuropathy is unpleasant, but heart disease is even worse. And in addition to neuropathy, the diabetes being associated with neuropathy. It's also associated with cardiovascular, heart disease, heart attacks, strokes. That's the worst. I can, you know, I had a friend who had 
a stroke. He was in his 40s and he had a stroke. The last he only lived 10 years after that, but the last 10 years he was a paraplegic, and it was just it was awful. It was tragic, tragic, tragic. And I don't want that to happen to you, my friend. So really, I can't, I, I, I don't know how. I, I don't want to pound, beat a dead horse, but really, you've got to focus on your life and you've got to focus on, on the lifestyle choices you're making, in addition to getting on a supplement program. More water first thing in the morning can be helpful, and also uh, uh, exercise after eating. It's a great strategy for folks who are dealing with blood sugar problems. Take a walk after you eat. It will help your body utilize that sugar a little bit more effectively. There's still more you got to do, but that's, that, that's a nice little uh, handy tip for you. Go out and do a brisk walk after you have a, a, a meal, especially a sweet meal or a, a bready or starchy meal. All right, I hope I helped you out, my friend. Thanks for your call. Anything else you want to add? You betcha. Thank you. Okay, and I, have, I pretty well whacked out of the bread and the, the potatoes, which I love. That was a real... Oh, that's a tough I, one. I think I eat too much fruit. It, uh, fruit's a big problem. Absolutely. Fruit today is bread to be super sweet. All right. Have a beautiful day, man. Good to talk to you, Doug. All right. Let's go to uh, stay in Colorado, I guess I'd say, and talk to Sharon. Hello, Sharon. Hi, Ben. How are you? I'm good. Where are you in Colorado? Erie. Oh, you're in Erie. Okay. Have we met, you and I? No, we haven't, but I, I order your products all the time. I love them. The church treatments. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I, I think I know who you are. You're, uh, I talked to you on the phone. Didn't I talk to you on the phone one time? Yeah, we've talked yes. a couple times. Okay, I remember you. Well, good. I'm glad you're enjoying the truth. What, what uh, truth treatment products are you, are you using, Sharon? Uh, well, currently I'm using, well, I've got uh, the, the truth balm, the serum, and the omega-6 healing cream. Awesome. And you're enjoying yeah. them, I take it? I am. I am. I, Although I'm, I'm calling today because I've had, I had it six years ago, uh, perioral dermatitis. Dermatitis. Digestion. Yeah. And, Di- digestion. Mm-hmm. It's in the digestive yeah. system. It's not a skin problem. Okay. Okay. So, so you I've keep, been using the, the, the Omega-6 healing cream on it, but it's been... Ha, mm, it's, that's not a, it's not a skin problem. It's an immune system problem. It'll soothe it. The Omega-6 will soothe it a little bit. But the yeah. problem is the problem is in the digestive slash immune system. You got to work okay. on food. One couple tricks for you. Uh, perioral, a lot of times perioral dermatitis is linked to low stomach acid. So just try doing some apple cider vinegar with your meals, or maybe uh, something called betaine HCL with your meals. You'll get that in the ultimate enzymes. Use it with all your meals. In fact, use the ultimate enzymes with apple cider vinegar with all of your meals. Uh, anything you do to support digestion. If you have any, di- you must have a history of. Di- digestive problems that almost it's unlikely that you don't so if you can track those down that will be helpful as well eliminating problem foods and such using your nightly essence focus on the gut perioral perioral dermatitis that is rashes or sometimes people will get acne around the mouth it's not acne but breakouts around the mouth area think of the digestive system food allergies food intolerances okay Okay? Mm -hmm. that's not a skin Um, problem so so i am doing um Charcoal. That'll and help. And bentonite clay. And bentonite clay. Yes. Yeah? All that'll help. All that'll help. That's good for everybody. Okay. All, All right. We'll get working uh, on it. <laughs> All right, Sharon. Good to talk to you. Have a great day. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Uh, let's go to Alabama and say good morning to Julie. Hey, Julie. Yeah. Hi. Hi. What's going on? Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, first, I'd like to tell you I read a paper. Um, written by a medical researcher, she was given the job of researching that flu in the early 1900s, and her conclusion was that so many people died from aspirin poisoning. She said that the hmm. dosages for aspirin hadn't been figured out yet, and they handed out aspirin by, just by the fistful in people, hmm. and that was her conclusion. So I thought that was very interesting. That's very, that is extremely interesting. I hadn't heard that. Yeah. And by the way, yeah. uh, uh, the uh, Spanish flu, the, the Spanish flu, you're talking about the Spanish flu, I take it, in 1918. Right. Right. That right. killed uh, 5% of the world's population was, was killed by the Spanish flu. Can you imagine yeah. this? Well, interesting. Interesting. That was an interesting conclusion. She said that they, they didn't have a dosage for aspirin, and it was in vogue, and they just handed okay. it out. Right I, I can't yeah. imagine that aspirin. That, you know, 100 million people died. 50 to 100 million people died uh, in the Spanish flu. I can't imagine that was all caused by aspirin, but but aspirin may I'm not, not a have researcher. helped. <laughs> I'm not a researcher. I'm just okay. passing that on. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Um, I have two children that are very different, but they both have little bumps on their arms. Okay. And I thought, did I hear you say it's a 
have mega threes. I, I just I listen to me health shows, and so I just wondered if you would comment on that, please. You only need one health show. That's this one. No, yeah, I'm just kidding. I know. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm pulling your leg here. So the bumps, but uh, we give you a unique perspective. I have a unique take that I, that nobody else is talking about here. For one thing, the skin is not the skin, or, or let me say it right. again. Problems on the skin are not about the skin. Like I was talking to Sharon before. That's a big mistake people make. Problems about the skin should always be uh, problems on the skin should always be regarded first and foremost as based in the immune system. The skin is a, a head; it's a satellite headquarters of the immune system. The main headquarters of the immune system is located where in the gut, in the intestines specifically. All right. All right, that's the headquarters of the immune system. Rashes, redness, bumps; these are all manifestations of skin immunity. And occasionally that can happen through something topically, like you know you you have a, a, you're allergic to something in a product, perhaps, or something along those lines. Latex allergy or talc or gluten, even topical gluten can be a problem for some folks. But for the most part, you're dealing with an internal issue. The only uh, a, a to blood toxicity that's coming in from the digestive system. So the only way to really assess this is by eliminating foods. Now, there's lots of ways to do an elimination diet. I've always said that you, you know, the best way is to stop eating for a few days and then write in a book everything you eat and then link what you're eating to specific symptoms. That's a little difficult for some people to do, and understandably. You know, so another way to do it is look for the foods you eat a lot of. Look for foods. If it's kids, what are they eating a lot of? And then stop. have them stop eating the foods that they're eating the most of. Because usually, it's the foods we love the most that cause the most problems. You, you follow me? Yeah. So, so if it's, to have a kid do an elimination diet, not so easy sometimes. So see what the kid is eating a lot of. Some likely suspects, not the only suspects, but likely suspects are going to be gluten and grains and dairy and soy and peanuts. Those are likely suspects. That, I'm not saying those are that, those are it, but those are things you can focus on. Although a food diet, an elimination diet is best done by fasting and then do, doing a food diary. If you're really, really serious about it, uh, that's the best way to do it. Also, things like uh, good bacteria, probiotics, the, the nightly essence, fiber, um, uh, bentonite clay to help detoxify, digestive enzymes. There's all kinds of strategies you can use for uh, digestive system. But the, the bottom line here, Julie, is a skin problem is not necessarily a skin problem, even though it shows up on the skin. In fact, it almost always is going to involve something that's going on in the blood slash digestive system. That is, they're basically, okay. when I talk about the digestive system, I'm really talking about the blood. Okay? Does that help? Okay, thank are they you. Milk, yeah, are, they milk, are they milk drinkers, by the way? Are they milk drinkers? Are they bread eaters? They are. are they cereal this eaters? What puzzles me because they're very different eaters. One of them is a girl who's who's her ideal body weight and she eats like a little bird. The other one's more like a lion. matter of little bird doesn't, and little he bird eats doesn't, everything. birds eat seeds. Birds eat seeds. Seeds yeah. can be a problem. So anyway, yeah. I got to go, Julie, okay. but I'm happy thank to help you. you. I'm happy to help if you want to send an email. Okay, take care. Okay, if thanks. you want to send an email, Bye. send it to ben at ksco.com. Anybody out there, okay. just give me some time to get back to you because I get tons of emails. All right, that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening. Have yourselves a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. Don't forget to check out my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. If you want to join the Bright Side Ben team, you can also call 866-735-2470. And please check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now. 